Hello and welcome to a Broken Tippet fly tying video. Today we're going to be tying the Damselfly Nymph. The Damselfly Nymph has a two year life cycle, which means you can pretty much always find them at the lake. Damselflies hatch in spring and early summer. Today we're going to be using a size 14 nymph hook, an olive ultra thread 70 denier. So I'm just going to start by putting the thread onto the hook shank, a couple wraps to get me started, and then I'm going to come in and trim the tag end off and the first bit of material that we're going to tie in right away are going to be the eyes for the damselfly so for the eyes we're going to be using these are just called mono eyes and if you put them on parallel with the hook shank do one thread wrap over top and then a second one we can come in here and manipulate those eyes now perpendicular to the hook shank and we want to be a little bit behind the eye of the hook just like that so that looks good right there um, we're going to come in here with a couple figure eight wraps just to secure these down and the reason why we want to have them just behind the eye of the hook is because we do have some other material that we're going to be tying in in front and we just want to make sure that we have um, have enough room there so once those are tied in we're just going to build a little bit of a base behind the eyes just like that and we're going to leave the thread behind those mono eyes now the damsel fly that we're going to be tying is a slim body um, so we're just going to make sure that we keep everything smooth as we work our way down the hook shank and this is going to have a nice little tail so for the tail I have some Nature Spirit Marabou, and this is a medium olive color. And the secret with Marabou is that when you pull out a Marabou plume, it's gonna look like this. I always get rid of this bottom section here, the really fluffy parts. And by doing that, we're just gonna take this all in one clump and rip this off, just like that. And we're gonna do the same to the other side as well. Those are just like the nasty, uh, they're not fun to work with. And then we're left with a nice feather like this. Now we're not gonna tie in the whole feather. Um, so with this piece, we could probably get easily, you know, three to four flies out of this uh, single feather. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna isolate a good handful and this is gonna be used for our tail. So this looks like a good amount right there. So we're gonna rip that off you can see how much we still have left to play with so um, we'll save that for another fly and to tie in the marabou just want to make sure that all of the feathers are nicely aligned and this is the base where i ripped it off of the stem so i'm just going to come in here with the th thread wrap over top to cinch that down and i can kind of pull that in and make sure everything neat. I'm going to, I'm going to give a couple of thread wraps back towards the eyes just to lock some of those um, marabou fibers down. And then I'm going to come in here with nice easy wraps all the way down to the hook shank. And before I mention that this is going to be a thread body damsel. So we really don't want to have any big clumps or anything like that. So nice and easy. And that is starting to look really nice. Uh, the great thing about damselflies is that, you know, you can tie them in a, in a good variety of colors. Um, so we're using a medium olive here today. You can do a dark olive, uh, you can do a brown, you can do a ginger. So it, it's a great, uh, you, want, you want to make sure that you have a good variety of colors and sizes in your Stillwater fly box. Okay, so that's looking good. We've brought down the marabou to the, the, to the curve of the hook shake. And now what we're going to do instead of cutting the marabou off you really get like a, a sharp um kind of like a cutoff point on the marabou so instead what we're going to do is we're going to take a finger length so i'm just going to come in here i want the i want the tail to be about the length of the hook shank so i'm just going to do that replicate that distance and come here with my other hand and rip those fibers off and that's still a little bit too long but you can see how 
when you ripped it off, you get like a nice kind of uneven, um, it looks a lot more natural. So I'm gonna come in here a little bit further and take some of those out. And we're just gonna shorten up that fly or that tail. There you go. So that's looking good. So we want about the same length as the hook shank that the tail is. And what that's gonna cause is a lot of movement in the water. Okay, so now we're gonna bring our thread back up to the top. Nice and smooth wraps. Keep everything as even as possible. Right there to behind those mono eyes. And the next little bit of material that we're gonna tie in is some ultra wire. So this is small ultra wire. And I like to do copper, because I find that copper and the olive really look nice together. It's a nice color combination. So we are gonna tie that wire in. Two wraps with the wire. And then I'm gonna pull that wire back just so it sits right behind those mono eyes. And now I can do thread wraps all the way down, right to the tail, nice and even. Yeah, that's looking great. And then once we finish that, we can bring the thread wraps all the way back up to the top in the exact same fashion. So nice and, nice and even wraps all the way up. And we want that body to stay even and slim. Damselflies have a slim body and then their head, their thorax is a little bit thicker. So that looks good right there. And we can come in here and just wrap that rib all the way up to those eyes. So we wanna do nice and even wraps. The rib is gonna give the body a little bit of a natural segmentation, and it's also going to protect our fly and make it durable so we can fish it more than, more than just once. Okay, that looks good there. So we'll do two wraps behind and two wraps in front of the wire. And then we can come in with that helicopter and break this wire off. And give a couple more wraps in front. Now the next material that we are gonna tie in, uh, I have some olive scud back. And the scud back is gonna give us a little bit of a casing on top. So I'm just gonna cut a nice even tie-in point. Now with the tie-in point, you can create like a little, I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick this up on the camera, but a little, almost like a T. So we're gonna tie this in. So the scud back is laying towards the tail And I'll show you guys here in a second what that looks like. There, so we just tied the scud back in so it's facing the tail and we can kind of give like a false wrap just to see because we're gonna wrap this forward. So that looks good just there. And we're creating a little bit of space behind because uh, we are going to add some dubbing to this. We're gonna create a nice little dubbing noodle and for the dubbing, we're just using some olive dubbing. And you don't need a lot, less is definitely more. We're gonna create that nice little noodle, so just wrap the dubbing onto the thread. And we'll bring that up to the top there. And then with the dubbing, we wanna sit just behind the eyes, and then we're also gonna do that same figure eight motion over top of the eyes and then a few in front as well. Now you make sure that you don't want to um, cover that hook eye. So keep everything neat behind it. 
So that looks good there. I'm actually just gonna come in and trim off a few of those loose fibers. Perfect. And then we can bring our scud back over top. So we can pull on that and cinch that down. So I like to do three turns over top of the scud back, kind of pull down so you get some tension. And then we're gonna do a couple right in front. And then we're gonna pull up on the scud back and trim that off nicely. And that is pretty much it for this. We're gonna come in with our whip finish tool. And put some nice whip finishes in there. And trim off the thread. Again, just gonna come in here and trim off any of those loose dubbing fibers. And now damselflies also have legs that come off near their head. So if you have a dubbing brush, um, I actually just made this myself. I have a chopstick with Velcro attached to it. And we're just gonna dub down some legs. And that creates a nice leg effect, just like so. And then we can come and trim off. When you trim off the legs, I don't like to have anything lower than the hook point. So I like to keep everything kind of flush there. Uh, so that's looking really, really good. And there we have it, the Slim Damsel. Thank you so much for watching. Fish on. Thank you for watching another Broken Tippet video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like what you saw, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. Fish on.